Hi guys, it's a beautiful afternoon. I'm on Money Road in Money, Mississippi. And this retro looking pump station is actually a replica of an old style gas station common in the 1950s. This building somewhat resembled another building I'm about to show you, or what's left of it. And there it is. As you can see, it's all covered in vegetation, but this is where Brian's Grocery Store and Meat Market once stood. And if you've heard of the name Emmett Till, this is the spot where a 14-year-old Chicagoan who came to visit his great uncle and relatives unbeknownst to him repelled the civil rights movement by allegedly flirting and whistling at a 21-year-old white woman working in the store. And if you are familiar with Jim Crow laws in the 1950s, this is a dangerous act to do in the Deep South are black and it cost him his life. Till arrived in Money, Mississippi on August 21st, 1955. He stayed with his great uncle Moses Wright who was a sharecropper and he spent his days helping with a cotton harvest. On the night of August 24th, Till, a cousin and a group of other teens went to this grocery store after a day of working in the fields. Brian's grocery store was owned by Roy Bryant and his wife, Carol, who was working alone in the store when Emmett and his friends went there to buy candy and play checkers on the porch. The husband, Roy Bryant, was out on a business trip. What exactly transpired inside the grocery store that afternoon will never be known. Tell purchased the bubble gum, and in later accounts, he was accused of either whistling at, flirting with, or touching the hand of the store white female clerk and the wife of the owner, Carolyn Bryan. Well, anyway, the boys took off when they thought Carolyn was heading to her car to grab a gun to scare them off. Emmett didn't report this incident to his great uncle Moses, and Carolyn Bryan didn't say anything to her husband at first when he came back from his trip, fearing he might kill Emmett. But somehow Roy found out about it from a friend that witnessed it happen. This enraged Bryan, and he violently confronted Carolyn and in fear of her husband, confessed that the Chicago boy blurred and whistled at her, then took off with his friends. And now Roy wanted revenge, and he enlisted his half-brother, J.W. Milam, to help him teach this outsider a lesson. On August 28th, at approximately 2.30 a.m., Roy Bryant and John Milam kidnapped Emmett Till from Moses Wright's home. They drove around that night, punching Emmett on his face and body and then went to a two house where both men severely beat the boy, gouging out one of his eyes and then cutting off his ear. Then they took him to the banks of the Tallahatchie River where they shot him in the head. The two men tied the teen's body to a large metal fan with a length of barbed wire for dumping the corpse into the river. Moses Wright reported Till's disappearance to the local authorities and three days later his corpse was pulled out of the river. Till's face was mutilated beyond recognition and Wright only managed to positively identify him by the ring on his finger engraved with his father's initials LT. Authorities wanted to bury the body quickly but Till's mother Mamie Bradley requested to be sent back to Chicago. After seeing the mutilated remains, she decided to have an open casket funeral so that all the world could see what racist murderers had done to her only son. Jet, an African-American weekly magazine, published a photo of Emmett's corpse and soon the mainstream media picked up on a story. Roy Bryan and John W. Milam were arrested for Till's murder and went on trial in a segregated courthouse in Sumner, Mississippi. There were a few witnesses besides Moses Wright, who had positively identified the defendants as Emmett's killer. On September 23rd, the all-white jury deliberated for less than an hour before issuing a verdict of not guilty, explaining that they believed the state had failed to prove the identity of the body. Many people around the country were outraged by the decision and also by the state's decision not to indict Milam and Bryant on a separate charge of kidnapping. On January 1956, Roy Bryant and J.W. Milam had 
admitted to committing the murder of Emmett Till. Protected by double jeopardy laws, they told the whole story of how they kidnapped and killed Till to Look Magazine for $4,000. Roy Bryant and J.W. Milam are both dead now and were never punished for Emmett's horrific murder. However, it is not known if Carolyn is still alive. She would be 87 years old today. And in 2007, she confessed to an author that Emmett did not sexually harass her. Nothing that boy did could just ever justify what, what happened to him, she said. Now we're heading towards Elsa, Illinois, where Emmett Till is buried. It's at Borough Cemetery. And ironically, I used to live in this neighborhood where the cemetery is at. I used to live behind the cemetery. So this is the entranceway of uh, Borough Cemetery. So we're going to head out to uh, Emmett Till's grave. And here it is. I'm walking towards it right now. It's easy to spot because it's this grave is well decorated with flowers. And it's uh, all of the graves here at Borough Cemetery. It's on the ground so there's no upright graves. Emmett, you lived a short life on this planet but you made a huge impact on account of your death and murder. Hopefully you're doing well where you're at right now. May you rest in peace and it's horrible what happened to you. Well, this concludes my uh, video on Emmett Till and <clears throat> the Brian's grocery store so I'm going to show you where I used to live behind the cemetery now my family lived in this house between 1973 and 1983 and all those years I had no idea that Emmett Till was right in my backyard thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one